in the heart of another country takes as its source inspiration a memoir by the late artist Ital Adnan, who was also a poet. And this particular source was a book called In the Heart of the Heart of Another Country. So there's an extra heart there. And the point about that was that we as individuals occupy or embody multiple lives throughout the expanse of a given period of time. We may be an artist, a visual artist, a poet, a lyricist, a filmmaker, a performance artist, but also we are mothers, we are fathers, we are children, we are activists, we are political, we are apolitical, we are sensuous, we are not sensuous, we are always dichotomous somehow in the field of culture. And it's those contradictions that really were particularly interesting to me in terms of thinking of the overarching connective tissue between or indeed amongst these artists, which was to think about what is it that leads us to think about the global contemporary today? One of the binding concepts of the show is that within difference is room and pause, indeed cause for celebration, in so much as that this is not an exhibition that seeks to accentuate artistic difference, but rather an exhibition that seeks to celebrate that difference. If we think of the exhibition as an act of storytelling, while most books, most stories are narrated in chapters, but in architecture and design and in spatial configuration, they also are sites of embodiment, which is why there are multiple perspectives to each and every work that the viewer can choose to embody. The first chapter of the exhibition, In the Heart of Another Country, is called Architecture by Other Means. And it's about where the abstract body meets the concrete city. You experience that the minute you enter the Hall of Contemporary Art when you bear witness to a work by Jumana Manna, which is a piece of scaffolding from the city of Beirut that has been transposed and re-erected into this site. And one may look at the date, which is 2021, and make any number of assumptions. One, that this work is a nod to a city in flux, a city that is undergoing specific kinds of turmoil, or they may just simply choose to see it as a ready-made object. But whatever the case, the travel of that material into a completely different context here is very much about how artworks can animate and layer histories onto each other. Artworks are a kind of palimpsest. They enable us to look at the surface of things, but also to think through to what exists between the lines of history, between what official record and history reveal, and what they allied is, of course, what we seek to make visible in this context. And as you dig deeper and dive, you move into the second chapter, which is about portraiture. But it's also about reclaiming portraiture as an act of repair. We as individuals have the right to demand and to see the images that represent us. And asking to see ourselves should not be conceived or construed as aggressive or agitating an act. It's simply a request. So here we witness artists such as Rashid Arain, who has been a pioneer as a critical theorist, as a painter, as a sculptor. And in his series where he explores how he could literally construct a self-portrait, we come upon the burden of prejudice that he experienced moving from Pakistan to Britain. That weight and nonetheless the incredible persistence of an individual carrying forth to reconstruct and construct 
worlds that at that point literally were simply imaginary. Being a visionary is what many of these artists in the second chapter, it's what they are and were because many of them did not gain recognition till late on in their lives, if ever in their lives. Here again we see Uget Kalan's abstracted body, these kind of reliefs that are exploding in her series Brib de Cor. And in this site, what I've tried to do is reveal how even the smallest portrait could occupy a large expanse and how the largest portrait need not exist in isolation. That portraits are spaces and sites of reclamation for sullying and tampering, for reconstitution and reimagination. And that weaves us into the third chapter, which is ironically called Going South. Going South is actually a, an opening to think about what does it mean to think about travel and movement. It's one of the central nodes that binds many, if not all, of these artists. I subtitle this from Gulf to Gulf, from Coast to Coast, because Sharjah, the Emirate of Sharjah, is the only of the seven emirates that occupies two coasts, the Gulf of Oman and the Persian Gulf. And so to traverse its entire expanse requires an incredibly long journey. And the length of that journey is indeed part of the illusion of that place, but part of the illusion of many of these journeys, which is that a journey is determined by the individual and their capacities and their resources. And that is something that is particularly evident in a work such as Camp and their monumental film. And I say monumental, even though it's anti-monumental in certain regards. On the one hand, you see these widescreen shots where the physical armature of the economy that leads to the movement of these ships is made evident, but also the individuals within these ships, within these boats, are presenting their own autoethnographies. They may never have room to breathe fresh air or to stand still because the majority of their life is constantly spent in motion. And that leads me to the final work in the exhibition, which is Harar Sarkisian's Final Flight. Harar Sarkisian's Final Flight is a work that sits right across from Ryan Tabit's erected boat Cyprus, which is a feat of engineering in a sense to have it hanging there, but also a feat of multiple fictions and non-fictions. And yet the story of Final Flight is not a fiction. Seven skulls made animate and 3D printed embody and stand in as the seven heads of those rediscovered birds for forming that colony of seven birds that were found and deemed extinct. An aerial view of their world as seen through a satellite and then the image, the final image of them seen in the sky. These pictures sit with you. We as humans must constantly erect and re-erect ourselves. Those decisions may be small and large. It may be across the street, it may be across an ocean, but in those movements, we create things. We leave paths and trails, and we must think about the armature that we leave behind and what we construct and how that creates a sustainable legacy for future generations. And I believe that this work invites you to think about your own place in the world, in the heart of this country or in another.